Hi everyone, welcome to Pisces. My name is Wayne and I'm one of the marine guys that manages one of the tanks here. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about checking your water quality for your reefs. There are many different parameters we like to check for. The basic ones we typically check for is your nitrites, your nitrates, your ammonia, your pH. That's standard in many of our standard test kits. But when you're going into a reef, especially when you're a new reefer, you start to hear things like, well, what's about calcium? What about alkalinity? What's magnesium all about? How do these parameters really affect our reef tank? So today I'm going to talk about what is one of the fundamental things to test for in your reef tank and which is alkalinity. Why alkalinity over everything else I'm going to suggest that we need to keep a really cool close pulse on and that's because alkalinity affects the core fundamental building blocks for your corals. When we're talking about alkalinity, we're really talking about the presence of carbonate and bicarbonate in your water. Now what's your carbonate? Well, that's the fundamental ions that the corals use to build their exoskeletons along with calcium in the water. So calcium ions combine with the carbonate forming your calcium carbonate and that's the outer skeleton, that's how your corals actually grow. Think about it for us as human beings, we have our bones. We need to take calcium that actually helps to strengthen our bones and our skeletal structure. So without calcium in our diet, then our bones become weak. Although we process it differently as humans, it's the same type of idea for your corals. They do need their calcium and they do need the alkalinity combined, which is your carbonate and your bicarbonate, to build that exoskeleton. I really like the alkalinity checker from Hano and I'm going to tell you why. Basic test kits like this, the Salifert, these are all reagent tests and if you are busy as I am, whether it's in an environment such as this or at your home, your kids are always calling you, I have lost count so many times on how many drops, how many shakes and you're starting your test over again. These take a little bit of time and it's all very color dependent and not everyone sees color the same way. This is why I really like the HANA checkup. This is a handheld colorometer which takes the guesswork of our eyes trying to decipher what color change is it. If you have a fish only tank which is fish and live rock, well you need to be testing not so much because that's really for your corals. Once you're introducing corals for the very first time, you want to start to have a system that's going to be reliable and consistent. Those two key parameters, reliability and consistency. You don't have to deal with how you see your colors. It's going to give you a digital readout. Starting with a really good salt solution, most good salt solutions for your reefs already has some of the fundamental minerals that you need in there like your alkalinity is already going to be in there, your calcium and your magnesium. I'm going to show you two right now that I actually like. The reason I like Aquaforest Reef Salt, it's for reefers who want to sort of keep their alkalinity on the lower end. If you are keeping your salinity around 35 parts per trillion, this bucket will keep your alkalinity from about 7.7 .7 to about 8.3. Now 8.5 being a really good number to shoot for because that's in the middle of the range we like to recommend. Anywhere say from about a low of 8 to a high of 12. Now this one is Red Sea Pro salt this one has higher elevations of alkalinity so with the elevated red sea this one is going to be having your alkalinity between 11 to 12 that's the higher end and that's more for a little bit more professional reefers now this is why you do need your HANA checkers because if you're using these two different salts and you're not checking then you really don't know what's happening in your tank I recommend at least weekly water testing so when you're doing your regular testing, the alkalinity checker from HANA is going to be a very good tool to use because it's so fast and gives you very accurate and reliable results versus something like the Salifert. So now here we are, our water changes are not giving us the, the required alkalinity because our corals are growing, they're extracting the alkalinity which is your carbonate and your bicarbonate out of the water. They need to be replenished more often than your salt can replenish it. Now we're at the magical point where we're ready to start dosing. 
This is the part where most people in the hobby, you're either going to feel a little bit intimidated because there's so much information out there. What do I use? How do I dose my tank? And you don't want to be into all these different kinds of snake oils. This is why we say test before you dose. Now, the reason I like the HANA Alkaline to check up is that it's actually a colorometer. And how a colorometer works is that it actually measures the intensity of the light that passes through the solution. So then it gives us a digital reading of the sample. This is so much better than we trying to use a chart and use it from our eyes to see what the color change is. So this is a very highly accurate unit using a colorometer to give you a more accurate, more consistent reading of your alkalinity. So all the readings you'll hear me talk about today, it's going to be in DKH, that's the measure of alkalinity we'll be using. So if I say seven, eight, or nine, I'm referring to DKH, which is what the HANA Alkalinity Checker gives you the readings in. So now it's time to dose. How do you set up a simple dosing system? Well, the one that I recommend the most is using your automatic top-up with a reservoir. And one of the automatic top-ups that I highly recommend for this is going to be the Neptune ATK. The reason I really like the Neptune ATK in this one is because of the many fail-safes this unit has. The one thing you don't want to happen by putting your buffer or your alkalinity solution into your reservoir is that if your top-up system fails, then you can be dosing your tank with significantly higher amounts of your carbonate or bicarbonate that can increase the level of pH in your tank, which can be unsafe for your fish. With the Neptune ATK, this serves so many critical functions in a tank, uh, especially if it's a nano tank. And for nano, I mean if it's a 120 gallons or less and here is why when you're dosing alkalinity you want to dose alkalinity very slowly over a period of time what the ATK system does is it tops up your tank based on the evaporation in your tank so when you have the alkalinity buffer mixed in with your reservoir which is your RODI water then as the water evaporates from your tank the reservoir water with the alkalinity will be dosed in on a small slow consistent basis for dosing with your ATK the very simple way to use is a product that we call calcium hydroxide and how it works is that the hydroxide ions they actually find the dissolved carbon dioxide which is in your water and converts that into carbonate and bicarbonate which is then readily absorbed by your calcified organisms such as your corals. One of the reasons I like the ATK system from Neptune is that it is a standalone unit. You don't need the full Neptune Apex system to run this and this unit by itself has over four levels of redundancies of protection. It also has a float level switch so that in the event that there is a failure it will actually cut the water supply off thereby protecting your tank from changing its pH too drastically because it's been dosed with the calc washer. Now here comes the fun part for me. We actually get to test the tank using the HANA Checker. First thing we're going to do is turn the unit on. You turn the unit on by just simply pressing this button. Once it says add C1, then we know it's on and it's ready. A couple of things to note. This is a measurement vial. You don't want to ever touch around the glass here because your fingerprints and oils will actually throw the reading off because light coming through the vial will actually be changed. If you do happen to touch the side, just have a lint-free cloth and just simply clean it off when you're done. The first step in the test is going to be to fill the vial here to the 10 millimeters mark. It's actually marked right on the vial. Every time I take sample, I always wash a syringe out. So I'll just squirt this one out. Make sure there is no contamination in the syringe. Being careful how you handle your vial. The question is always asked, what point do you take the water level to? You want to take the water level to where the meniscus, which is a curve, is literally sitting at the bottom of the line. This is our 10 milliliters of unreacted sample. Put the cover back on. You want to always put this in the same way you took it out. So wherever the 10 milliliter mark is, you'll see 10 milliliters marked on here. I always face that to me. That way I know there's a consistent way of placing this in the HANA checker all the time. Simply close it, press the button again. It's now reading C2, which means that the meter has actually been zeroed and it's now ready for the reagent. Open up the HANA checker, take it out. At this point, I typically just always hold it with a lint cloth. Rest it down here safely. Take the reagent. Now the reagent will give you about 25 tests. This is where you use a syringe and a special tip that comes with the syringe. Insert 
into the reagent, slowly add, making sure all is dispelled, cover, gently invert the tube five times, making sure that there are no air bubbles in there. If there are any air bubbles, just give it a slight tap because air bubbles in the column will also throw your readings off. I see no air bubbles, I line up the 10 milliliter mark again towards me, put it back into the checker, close, and now we wait for the reading. This tank is reading 11.9. Really on the high side, but that's within our range. So this is our frag tank because we're really trying to push the growth and calcification of the frags. We keep the alkalinity on the higher side so that they're going to be growing a lot better. And it's as simple as that. That's our reading from our HANA checkup.